Hello everybody, my name is Kala Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to teach you how to safely charge and discharge ultracapacitors. Ultracapacitors are not supposed to be charged and discharged uh, directly uh, using a battery because it will create a spark, it will generate substantial amount of current and it could damage your power supply. You could charge ultracapacitors if you have uh, directly if you have a a current eliminating power supply a power supply that controls the amount of current that flows through the, the DC uh, wires or the DC output however most of us don't have current eliminating power supplies we connect the ultra capacitors directly to the car battery which is not recommended it will create arc it will create a substantial amount of pressure on the battery because it will be the same as short circuiting. A capacitor takes all the charge at once. It's not like a battery to gradually charge slowly and slowly. A capacitor is like a short circuit for a, vol uh, for a uh, DC circuit uh, and an ultra capacitor has so much capacity that that short circuit is not going to be just one second or two seconds. It will be continuous to the point that it will damage um, either the power supply or it will burn the wires that are charging it if the wires were the gauge of the wire is not uh, thick enough and and so on so the recommended way that uh, I should say the recommended solution is to use a small uh, resistor uh, now the problem with using resistors is even though the resistor will work perfectly fine it's not going to tell you when the capacitor is full. You have no idea when the capacitor is full and it doesn't take any more charge. That's why I recommend using a light bulb, a 50 watt, 100 watt light bulb uh, in series with a capacitor to charge it. So now I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So this is my ultra capacitor. Obviously, this is my, you know, balancing board. About this, I made another video that balancing boards are very important. You must have a balancing board. If not, uh, the capacitors, one capacitor could reach higher voltage than its uh, recommended 2.7 volt. Uh, so the balancing board keeps the voltage distributed evenly throughout all the capacitor banks. Uh, this way you don't have uh, like, you know, high volts on one bank or second bank. All of them will have even voltage. That's why it's good to use it. Now this is composed of 12 capacitors, as you can see, um, you know, 12 capacitors. They are connected in series and parallel. Um, uh, that's why we have a, you know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point balancing board with six positions. This has six ICs or transistors because it has 12, uh, you know, capacitors with two capacitors in parallel and then all of them in series. Anyways, long story short, let's learn how to charge safely. So notice, first I'm going to show you this. So this is my DC source. If I were to, let me get a longer cable, one second. Okay, so now I have here 14 volts. The capacitor can take up to 16, so 14 is safe. Now, if I were to put the plus and minus, let me bring this in the camera so you could see both the terminals. I want you to see this display and uh, these together at the same time. So I'm gonna put the plus, and as soon as I put the mi the negative or the minus, this goes to max. This is the this even though this has current elimination, the current elimination is five amps. It goes to max. It goes to 4.9 and the voltage drops to 1 volt because basically I shorted the power supply. Literally shorted the power supply. That's why this is not safe. So what I need to do is instead I use a light bulb. I put a light bulb. I, I need to use the light bulb on the positive terminal so you can see better. It doesn't ma matter which terminal but positive terminal is better. has a better camera angle. So I put the light bulb there. And this goes here. Now this light bulb will light up. As you can see, it has lit up because the current is flowing. The current is flowing and the current is charging the capacitor. 
now my voltage didn't drop all the way to zero, it dropped to five volts in maximum amps because this is not intended for charging ultracapacitors. This is still a, a weak power supply. Uh, but slowly but surely it will charge the ultracapacitor. And as soon as the charge of the ultracapacitor is, is complete, as soon as this is fully charged, the light will go off. You will not have any illumination. Uh, this is the safest way to charge. Now, if you want to discharge the capacitor for shipping or for whatever reason you need to discharge it, then you simply hook this to, to the other terminal, like this. Now, why did the light didn't come on? Because this still doesn't have enough voltage to give to that. It's like it takes hours for this to fill up in order to give it back to that. That's the reason why it didn't. So if I were to charge it directly at 4.0, um, at, if I ch were to charge it directly, voltage drops to near zero, which isn't safe. Now, voltage drops to 3 volts, which is still a lot of pressure on this, but much safer than, you know, be charging it directly. Doing so does waste a little bit of energy to heat, because you're simply wasting energy to heat when, when you do this. Uh, but uh, it's very crucial to do this so that you don't blow your capacitors, blow your battery, or burn all your wirings and what have you. Now, um, the difference between the light and no light will be drop of the voltage. Watch this. See, no light, the voltage drops. With light, the voltage gains up because it eliminates the current. So basically, it doesn't short circuit the DC, um, you know, the DC power supply. So this is how you charge your ultra capacitors and uh, as you can see right now it's being charged and if I leave this for let's say like two three four hours depending on the capacity of the capacitor and depending on the current from the power supply if I leave it the light will go off because the capacitor will be full it doesn't have any capacitance to accept more charge so therefore there will be no electro electric flow through the wire now I'm going to talk to about this where you get this now this is something that you can make yourself. All you need is a like a, a, a light. In this case, I'm using a 100 watt. You could use a 50 watt. The, the bigger the light, the higher the wattage, the faster the capacitor is going to fill up. The safest is 50. I don't recommend 100. 100 is not safe because a 100 watt light, light bulb gets extremely hot. See, I can't even touch it right now. I'm taking it out with, my, with, a, with a napkin. And this you can buy online. These you can buy online and crimp it. So basically, this is probably like seven, eight bucks. This is another seven or eight dollars. These are probably fifty cents each. This whole setup will cost you to to make this will cost you like twenty bucks. Or I'm gonna leave a link where you could buy a complete ready-made setup for for nineteen ninety-nine. I believe it is. Uh, you can buy the you know complete setup. It's still too hot. I was trying to grab it. It's still too hot. It's like burning your fingers hot. So yeah, that's how you uh, charge and discharge ultra capacitors. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe.